Okay, so I had a uh, did a video on replacing rotted window sills on my Anderson window, and I had a request to show things in more detail. So, I'm gonna try to do that. First thing I do is, if you look at the window sill, if you push on it, you can see it's rotted, soft. So we want to replace that. We use a PVC board. So the first thing we gotta do is remove the sash. And if you put both sashes up. There's screws here, 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 and here, and you want to take those screws out. So I'm going to do that, um, and then uh, what I'm going to do next is is put both windows down, and there's a screw inside here and one behind that sash, and then um, that'll get me removing the sashes. Okay, so all the screws are out. So now we need to take the side piece, side jam out. You do that, raise the windows up. set this here this is the left side jam where I took the screws out just pull it out get that little screwdriver just try to be careful not to break it sometimes it catches down on this little hump here Pull it out. Pull it out and then just slide it down from behind the window. Uh, knock the iPad down to the floor. At least I didn't knock it out the window. That would have been even worse. So then I'm going to pull the sashes back down. get it down you can pull it in it's got this string holding it down and on the inside it's got this you'll see where the string attached you really can't get a good picture of it but there's a uh, little piece of plastic that holds that string in you want to pull that out and slowly let it up inside you do the same for the other side, you do the same for the top sash, and the sashes will pop out. It's pretty straightforward to pull that string out of there, so. Okay, so both sides, so the sashes are out. I can show you that piece. There's a little, um, uh, 
piece of plastic that goes right in this hole and the string slides up in that terrible photographer string slides up in that groove and that's what holds these in and then when you take them out you'll see these pieces of plastic up there so next we want to take the side jam out we have this side jam out already and you can see I got a little bit of rot down the bottom not bad not as bad as I thought it would be and we'll do take this side jam out we have these little stops at the bottom and you can kind of pry a little finishing nail out of there that comes out pretty quick Finishing nail piece and then we want to pull the side jam out similar to the other one let's get a screwdriver in behind it This one side on this side here is behind the, the trim, which is making it a little harder to get it out. But let's get a screwdriver in there and work at it. this little lip. Gotta get over that lip. Let's get over the lip. It's not easy to get it out. Got another little stopper up the top. Get that out. It's a little finishing nail. A little stopper finishing nail up there. I'll take that out. And there you have it, side jams are out. And you can see I got some rock down here. We're gonna cut this off. We're gonna cut this off here and replace this piece going down. Do the same on this side. Um, cut it off and replace that piece going down. So, uh, Next thing we gotta do is get the uh, oscillating saw. So the next step I want to do is to take the window sill out. Sometimes if you're lucky, if they're really rotted, you can pull it out. This one's not going to do that. So I'm going to use my oscillating saw and I'm going to cut the window sill. I'm going to try to cut it down at the end, probably about three quarters of the way to one side, because I do want to use the long piece as a template to cut the new window sill on the table saw. So uh, just be careful. There is studded 2x4 underneath that, but this is hot or vinyl and it's got rotted wood, so it's going to cut pretty easy. So um, let me turn the video off and do that. So I got the windowsill out. Basically, you want to get it out any way you can. The windowsill is nailed to the side jam. You can see these big nails over here. There was still some good wood on the edges, so it was a little stubborn for me, but I did get it out. I cut this side. I had to pry the... the uh, windowsill popped off. I didn't try to do that, but that's okay if it does. You can reattach it. So here's what we have. I'm going to get rid of this. This is all rotted wood inside there. It really looks crappy. Get out here. And this piece is all rotted wood too. Got a little ant's nest in here. You can see little critters floating around. We'll take care of them. So uh, basically that's it. Now, like I said, I had pretty good wood there, and it, what happens is this board's notched out, and the sill, this board's notched out, and the sill fits in there and has these nails coming from the outside. Um, other things you could do with that, I am going to cut the side jams off, 
you may find it a little easier to cut the side jams off first and then take the um, windowsill and the side jams and then split the windowsill and pull it in. That way those nails will come out the side jams. Um, so uh, the next step is to cut the side jams with the saw. And what I do is I use a level and I mark a, a plumb a straight a level line for the saw. And the reason I do that is the windows are in at a little bit of an angle. And uh, when you go to cut the replacement pieces, it's a lot easier to cut a straight 90 than it is to try to figure out what angle that was if you just sort of randomly draw a line across it. Um, and uh, there is a left and right side to the jams, so you have to remake it. It's actually real simple in the table saw. You cut the sides, and all you really need is to make these grooves. A little slug there too, look at that. But all you need to do is cut these grooves for this these little grooves to fit in and attach in. Uh, everything else is flat, so you don't really need to have all this fancy stuff in there. So the next goal is I'm going to um, use a mark a pencil or a level and mark some cutting lines. So I marked my level cutting line here and here. Doesn't matter how high you come up, just make sure you come up to good wood. And next thing I'm gonna do is cut them out there, the or the uh, oscillating saw. Just be careful, try not to hit the trim here and try not to hit that. It's pretty easy if you have the oscillating saw. Okay, so I use the oscillating saw there and I cut out um, this side, right side, and then I cut out the left side. And so here is your, this is rough framing, and you can check your rough framing over there, and my rough framing here, and all my rough framing, the uh, rough opening two by fours look pretty good. So um, we'll go down to the table saw and make up a bunch of these pieces. The other thing we want to do is I have this piece of wood here, just a piece of two by four. And what I'm going to do is put that against the rough opening and I'm going to scribe a line right here. And I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm going to bring it over here and just do the other side to scribe a line. And then what you do uh, let me put a line on here or just to let's pretend. So let's say that's, let's say I did put that there and I scribed the line. So then what I'll do down in the garage is I'll take this piece and I'll put it here because this is the thickness of my side jam. And then this space between this thickness of the side jam and that line is the space between the back of the side jam and the rough opening. And then what I'll do is I'll cut a small piece of wood that size and I'll slide it up under here and I'll put a screw here to hold that piece of wood between the rough opening and the side jam. And the new piece of side jam, I'll do the same thing. So that'll brace the side jam, uh, attach the side jam to the uh, rough opening. So that's basically, you don't have to measure, you just uh, draw the line and then subtract the width of that board and you have the width of whatever shim you need. So uh, we'll go downstairs to the table saw. Okay, next thing I'm gonna demonstrate is how to make these side jam pieces. I already made my own out of treated lumber. Uh, actually, it's like a treated one by six, three quarter inches wide. So I'll demonstrate using this piece of scrap. This is a piece of tongue grooved pine flooring. It's a little thicker than what I need, but it'll work for demonstration purposes. So first thing I'm gonna do is put my piece against the saw blade, bring the fence over. That tells me how wide I need to cut the board. So I'll do that. thing you'll notice um, where the side jam goes is a little bit of an offset see it so we'll cut that what we need to do is lower the blade the 
about half the thickness of the board. Move the fence over a smidgen. Probably just about a saw kerf. Run it through again. Next thing we have to do is cut grooves. So make sure you know which side's which. So this side is the one side I just cut, so I'm gonna put that this way. And, oh well, got nails in it, but anyway, what I would do is lay this down, or line that up, go into groove, take the nails out of it, let me get another piece here. another piece from some of the other windows so what I'll do is line up the groove bring the fence over and then drop the saw blade down so that the piece will slide through the groove Cut the board. Making sure we oriented properly to that side we just cut. We have the groove. So you fall through, do the other groove, so two grooves. And then you also need, need a groove on the outside where it goes into the outside window jam. And there again, you smooth the saw blade over, put the board on edge, and run it through. And you can make those pieces. So now we'll assume you made your side pieces. So the next thing you want to do is cut these pieces. So I'm matching it up. The grooves are in the right place, side grooves. And I'm just going to mark how long I want it. I marked it actually longer than I need. I'll cut it on the crosscut sled. Do that. If you don't have a crosscut sled for your table saw, I definitely recommend it. Make a cut. This is the one we want to match. Okay, that's the one we want to match. So what we want to do is, we don't need this part right here. That's the one we want to match. We don't need that part right here. We need, we just want to cut it right there. So I'm going to adjust the angle. Eyeball the angle. pretty good it's actually about 13 and a half degrees because I know that from doing the other ones okay we'll get a little bit more And we want uh, 
this piece that way. And we want to make sure we have the mark where we want it. Okay. We have the angle set. And we're just going to cut. the notch out that's for the windowsill cut that up with a handsaw and then I do need to put in two pocket holes in this for the um, I'll show you that in a second. So I have both my pieces cut out. Um, I have the notch. And like I said, we only want to match up to that line. We don't need this part. So the next thing we want to do is put pocket holes in here so we can attach the uh, new windowsill to that. So I have my pocket hole jig and I'll demonstrate how I'm going to do that. Again, goes that way. I'm trying to video with one hand here. So I have my pocket hole jig. And what you want to do when you drill the pocket holes, you want to make sure that the hole doesn't come out where these uh, grooves are, because that way your screw is going to get in the way of your side jam. So you just want to arrange it so that doesn't uh, do that. Okay, so I did the pocket holes in that one. And then I'll take the jig off. And the pocket holes in that one. So, if we put it here, what will happen is the new window sill will fit underneath this, and the pocket holes will come in from the top to pull the window sill to the bottom edge. So, the next thing we need to do. Remember that board that I measured on? So this line and this line were all the way out to the window jam. I took the width of the jam and put it on there, subtracted the width. So now I need to make two small um, shims, one that size and one that size. And they will fit behind the jam um, to attach the side pieces. So I'm going to do that now. Pretty straightforward. Just use a piece of 2x4 and just rip it to whatever width you need it. Um, like I said, pretty straightforward. So like I said, pretty straightforward. Just ripped a piece of 2x4 down to get those width that I needed. So the next thing I want to cut is the window sill. Now you can use your old window sill that we took out as a template. This is an extra window sill I have. So the window sill, if you look, is beveled on both sides. It's actually a 13 degree bevel. What we're going to do first is we set the saw blade at 13 degrees and we're going to run the PVC board through at 13 degrees and we're going to cut that first angle and I have the bench set so that the saw will cut all the way through just the Now when you want to cut it, you want to push it slowly and evenly and push it all the way through the blade. That way you will not get burn marks. Okay, that was 
first cut. So then we'll take this little piece and turn it over. Take my piece and turn it over. So you want two parallel sides. Bring that edge all the way up to the saw blade to get your width. And you can see my taper, not much of a taper, but you can see a little bit of a taper. Okay, so I take that out, put this in. I have the taper down like I should, and I'm going to make this cut that way. So I'll get this out of the way, put the saw down, and make the next cut. back up to 90 degrees and I'm going to drop the blade down What you want to do, uh, we'll decide which edge we're going to use. Uh, pick a top and a bottom, it doesn't really matter. But what I want to do is put a little notch in the bottom here so that the surface tension, when the water comes around here and wraps around, it hits that little notch and drops off rather than running up under the windowsill. And so it doesn't need to be deep, just maybe just a little bit. And right at the edge, so I'm going to move my fence over. Actually, what I'll do is I'll make it wider here. I'm going to cut that little notch right there at the bottom. Okay. I can even go over a tad more. Right there at the bottom. So we run that through the saw. You want to come fairly close to the edge uh, because uh, come over here. Um, well, I don't have a piece right out to hand, but anyway, when you put this in, this windowsill is thinner than the original. So what you have to do at the bottom, I'll show that later. You have to put a little piece of trim. And you can glue it PVC glue right on the edge here so if that notch is too far back it's going to hit your trim so uh, you'll see that later but anyway um, uh, that's why you want to move the notch forward a little bit so um, now uh, the windowsill you measure from the outside edge to the outside edge of the original window minus 29 and a half this board is a little bit long so I'm going to cross cut that on the cross cut sled okay so I brought everything up um, so here's these shims, they go up behind, and I'll put a screw in there, and then this piece will go in here, that notch fits right there, that notch fits in there, and then that slides in, and that will screw into that 
shim do the same on both sides but before I do that the next step is down here the old sash had a step down the old sill I mean had a step down and right here and what we have to do is file that flat flush for the new sill so I have to file up that vinyl and also down inside there there's a nailing strip and that's got to get sanded down this piece right there that piece right there has to get sanded down flush so the new sill fits in so I'm going to do that next okay okay so I'm back so what I've done, I filed down that edge. Um, I put the block behind, and put a screw in, and then screwed in my side pieces on both sides. I pre-drill everything so that nothing splits. The other thing I like to do is I make a little wedge to put uh, to give the sill some brace in the middle. Um, I've tried different ways of doing that. I cut it the same angle. As these, and then uh, just cut it uh, horizontal, or, you know, horizontal to fit. Um, a lot of times it's trial and error. So anyway, let's uh, let's see how the window sill fits. One-handed, bring the window sill in, make it flush with the outside on both sides. And there we go. I got a little too aggressive with the side pieces there, but I'll fill that in with some caulk anyway. So, uh, looks like I'm ready to put in some pocket screws in there. Um, we can put a level on it real quick. Pretty good. Like I said, this, this window has a the thing has a little bow in it, but that'll come down when I screw it into that lock. So uh, let me do the pocket screws. By the way, I did uh, spray that with ant killer, and I want to put some insulation in here before I uh, um, screw the uh, window sill down. Okay, so I have the window sill screwed in. I have the block in the middle. Uh, have insulation underneath it and put the level on. Looks pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is put the side jam in. And uh, what I like to do is put a little bead of caulk down here. And we'll just pump the side jam in. Um, slides up. And I gotta take that little finishing nail out here. Little finishing nail, send the way. Jam goes in. Has to fit up underneath that little thing up here. I'm gonna have to put a pair of needle nose pliers in them. Um, I just so I hook them up to the windows. Just grab it with needle nose pliers and pull it down. So I'm gonna have to do that. Took two hands to get those down, but so I got the side jam back in place. And I'm just gonna pop it in all the way down. One thing I did, I made this little gizmo. 
just a simple piece of wood put a groove in it so this fits into the side jam and I use it to tap the side jam in once again easier with two hands if you're not videoing but that's how I get the side jam in um, and then it's reverse procedure you put the sashes back in you grab those little things with a needle those pliers hold them tight stick them in the sides I'll do that uh, in a little bit 